when I go to rules, rules is an area absolutely that has changed quite a bit. It, it, it's actually become, well, it was pretty powerful to begin with, but now it's super powerful and, um, and easier at the same time, which is interesting. But um, as you can see here, guys, we have grouped canned rules here by kind of the category that they fall under. So the safety rules here, um, obviously harsh braking, acceleration, cornering, and I'll give you a second to, uh, to review those uh, um, definitions in a second, but you can see here speeding. Speeding over posted road speed here, guys. When you turn this one on, you can choose your speed over posted road speed to assist you folks with, now it's not only a maximum, although you can still have a maximum in here, let me know when my guys speed greater than 120 kilometers or 75 miles an hour. That's absolutely doable, but also have the option here to, to, uh, to let you know when they've sped, you know, six miles an hour or 10 kilometers per hour over posted road speed. Okay, so there's options there for you. Seatbelt use where we capture it off the engine, fantastic after hours use of possible accidents. Okay, so some great safety rules there. Canned, all you, literally all you need to do is turn it on and save it and it's on for the whole fleet and recording. Okay, so it can be that simple. Okay, so now let me scroll down here quickly. Productivity, productivity rules based on efficiency, they largely do, largely based on time. Make sure that your, your fleet out there is managing their time correctly, that you're paying for them for what they're working. <laughs> Um, very, very handy, can be a big ROI and rather quick ROI on this particular productivity side of things, but it's based on time, late arrival, early leave, unauthorized home stops. You guys get the ability to edit the hours in here. Of course, these often do reflect the, the need for zo proper zones to be entered in. You know, for unauthorized home stops, logically you would need your employees' homes entered in as zones, which is simple. Um, so productivity rules, very much the same. On off, you know, very, very simple to turn on. Fleet rules, this, this, this helps us speak to a little bit, gives you guys a little bit of a simple insight into the engine health. Um, engine light, you can turn it on and let you know when the engine light is on. You no longer have to rely on your guys driving to tell you when the engine light is turned on. Now you can be notified immediately. Battery drain, um, tampering with the device, revving the engine, so RPM abuse here, and then of course reversing while leaving. We have put in a description here for each of these rules to help you define in terms of a harsh braking acceleration cornering. As you can see here, a simple description here when these are, uh, when these are turned on is a drop in speed of either 17 kilometers per hour or 10 miles per hour in a single second for the harsh brake. Okay, so that's a very, very simple definition that you can use as a guideline that's going to help you define what a harsh brake is. And then we kind of help to define it in terms of what you're going to feel in the vehicle. You know, the seatbelt's going to jam up on you or you're going to be thrown forward. Yeah, thrown forward a little bit. Okay, so that should answer that question. Correct? Okay. Yeah, I believe so. Roundabout way of getting there, but it was answered. <laughs> so. What you can do with some of these, uh, these rules as well is, as you can see, you do have the ability to edit them. When you turn them on in these particular harsh braking, acceleration, cornering rules, you're going to have the ability to slide this based on what type of vehicles you have. If you have different types of vehicles in your fleet, it's a simple matter of grouping your vehicles by those types and having a couple of different rules set up. Have one rule set up for the heavy duty guys, have another rule set up for the passenger, the light duty guys. So it's a very, very simple process. Um, Every single one of these uh, rules can also be set up to be emailed you guys, emailed to you guys or to whomever you choose in real time. I think a good example of this one is the possible accident. So we're going to be able to tell you, as you know, when a possible accident has occurred. Now we do say possible because knocking or kicking or booting the device can potentially um, create an accident uh, level piece of data. However, I will tell you, our engineers have worked very, very hard at filtering that type of data out because there's very much a difference in terms of the time frame of a kick in the actual time frame of an accident. So that has a lot to do with what we're filtering. A kick is a lot quicker than an actual crash. Okay, so we're taking that sort of, those sort of things into consideration when we're receiving these incidents. Okay, but we still want to let you know. And in fact, honestly, we hope it's just a kick. We don't want your guys to get an accident. 
There right. is actually, Heather, there's actually a log record in the accident and log details report that, that says possible device knocked um, event. So it kind of separates it out even further from a possible accident. Excellent. So that populates into the accident detail report, right, which is yep. found right here. Okay, same report that was available in 5.5 .5 has been moved over to 5.6. Extremely, extremely detailed report. Not necessary to use unless there has been an accident that has occurred and you do want to go in and pull the accident data. Because when this possible accident has occurred, 90 seconds, is it 90 seconds, Steph, of second by second data? Yeah, yeah. It's 90 seconds. A minute seconds. and a half, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 90 seconds of second by second data does populate, as Steph said, into this view accidents and logs data report. And it lays out detailed, detailed data. Of course, then you know the speed they were going, you know if there was harsh braking, acceleration, cornering, you know, which will give you an idea of an, a, a lane or a harsh lane change various things like that, we'll be able to see uh, in this particular report in detail. Also, you can take that and put it on a map, and you can look at that hunk of data, hunk of accident data on a map to kind of give you an idea of, you know, where they were. They may have been at an intersection. Did they, you know, go over and kind of cross the line and hit a pole on the other side of the road? You know, God forbid, maybe they fell asleep. Um, but anyway, it will help to define the activity that occurred with that driver leading up to that accident. Okay. And then, of course, with this possible accident, turning it on and creating an automatic notification when it's occurred allows you folks to then act quickly for two reasons. Of course, the main reason for driver safety, right? You guys always want to make sure that your drivers are safe and everything's okay with them. But you also want to make sure that business is flowing smoothly. So if this guy over here gets in an accident, unfortunately, you know, hopefully everything's okay, but he might be tied up for a couple of hours doing his reports with the police officer and whatnot. Well, that gives you a real-time ability to, you know, get somebody else um, to take over that particular, that guy's call. Um, so it allows your business to flow smoothly as well as you're looking out for driver safety. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Heather, there's one quick question here on the how do you turn the rules on and off. And the rules are controlled by security uh, clearances. So if you can't interact with the rules, uh, somebody in a higher uh, level in your organization is going to have to turn them on and off for you. They may have established that these are the rules that we're going to monitor for the next, you know, six months or whatever. And then... Um, you know, they may make a change in the future and that higher level in the organization will be making that change. Uh, does that make sense? It does. It totally makes sense. And in the security clearances, which, guys, is the same as 5.5 .5 currently under um, the administration tab, under users, you're going to find security clearances. It's not necessarily recommended that everybody within your organization have access to the rules. You guys set your rules. This is what your drivers are aware of in terms of your rules. You don't want anybody necessarily messing around with those rules and tweaking and playing and turning them off or creating another one or, you know, various things like that. So, um, so yeah, Stephanie's absolutely right. Under the clearances here, which is a bounce out to 5.5, .5, you can, uh, they, they may very well be turned off or grayed out for, um, for the ability to, uh, to turn them on and off. And for that very reason, that you don't necessarily want everybody messing with them. Right. You, you take your eye off. You take your eye off the prize if you change what the rules are, you know, partway through your process. You don't get to the the level of success that you want on the current set of, um, you know, goals or objectives for the fleet for this uh, period. Um, the last question that I see here on the rules is: when you tick these on and off, are you ticking them for the whole fleet or for a group? So you are. Go ahead. I'll let you cover that. <laughs> Uh, when you're just using this simple on and off feature here, it's for the whole fleet. Okay, it's made to be that simple. There's often, um, it, 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 more often than not, just you want to come in, you just want the harsh brake rule, for example, on for the whole fleet, you turn it on, you, you walk away, you're done. It's simple. However, if you do want to be group specific, you simply come in here to the edit button and it allows you to be group specific right here. Now I, can change, now I can choose the group that I want this rule to apply to. And this goes actually not a bad question stemming from the different vehicle types. I want this, group, this particular rule to be for the light duty vehicle group. 
right? Correct. Cool. Correct. 